Okay guys, so we're back with another White Dwarf video. And yeah, as you can see we've got some Seraphon against some Corn Bloodbound. On the front, some nice artwork there. And you'll see as we open it up why we've got some Seraphon featured. So, stay golden demons it says. So, a little clue to what you might see inside. Yeah, for contents. And of course, we'll be going through page by page. Anyway, so we start with the contact as always, and we've got some beautiful, beautiful, very brightly coloured miniatures. And some lovely Imperial Fists with like, and some really nice green on the trim, which represent the fourth company. Um, nice and bright red and purple Lady Alinda, which is awesome. Um, lovely Blood Angels Leviathan, and then this awesome Saint Celestine and Gemini diorama. Really cool. Model of the month is this event as Fire Strike again, keeping with a nice bright colour theme that we seem to have going. Some nice sisters of battle. A painting question about Silver Maiden uh, ban sort of Banshee. Some lovely skeletons there. One of these Sepultural Guard. And then one of the little um, Chibi Sisters of Battle, which is quite cool as well. And yeah, there's more, the Night of Shrouds. Absolutely love the blue and the green going on there. And some nice Lord of the Rings miniatures there. A little kit bashing question. And in the conversion corner is this amazing hive tyrant, which um, beautiful conversion, but the paint job, it's, it's just absolutely stunning. That is amazing, so well done, Javier. World of Warhammer. So Phil Kelly's talking all about archetypes. Loads of different archetypes there of characters and whatnot. Maybe give you some idea, putting some lore into your heroes. Flashpoint is all looking at Forge World Metallica. And we have painting guides for them. So it's Katari and a Catathon Breacher. Then some converted and painted miniatures. I really like these white rust stalkers. I like the blue sort of crystal looking um weapons. Um funny enough by someone called Crystal as well. Really cool. Uh the looted uh, well it's Scorpus. Amazing. Don't see enough looted vehicles these days, we've only seen more looted vehicles. Who doesn't love a looted vehicle? And yeah, some beautiful Skatari. More beautiful Skatari. I love the Hoplites. Big fan of them. And um, there's Forge World Upgrade kit for those who might not know. And um, the tank as well is just gorgeous. As well as the characters and the Titanic and stuff. So, yeah, lovely, lovely little section there. So, Triforce Cluster, more Flashpoint. Uh, Chowed on Warzone stuff. Got some fiction for that as well. Um, so if you've been following along, then I hope you are enjoying it all. Some more stuff for the campaign, some Crusade relics. And then Echoes from the Warp has a little painting challenge. So there's a little 40k bingo thing there and the yeah, other Warhammer team have been participating themselves, so it's some nice Night Lords. Uh, Harold and Griffins, I want to say. And some Necrons as well. And then Golden Demons, so this is all looking at um, Sisters of Battle, or Adeptus Sororitas themed pieces. Um, mostly dioramas where they find themselves in quite perilous situations. Um, that's quite a nice one as well. So it's absolutely stunning work, as you expect. Um, that one's unfortunately um, has died, so <laughs> still counts <laughs> if there's a dead one on the base. And beautiful. Into the Age of Sigma now. So Time Celestial is all about the battle for Tepox Eye. So this is a little um, campaign featuring. Uh, Zeech Demons, Corn Demons, and Seraphon. 
and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of fluff. And then this is actually card, so you can cut these out. And you've got your little sort of reference cards for um, a couple of characters that they've made, and we'll show you how they made them very soon. Got some command abilities and whatnot on the back. So a little bit about how to play the campaign. Some battle plans. And yeah, Anvil of Chaos. So again, they're um, expanding on the um, Anvil of Apotheosis rules and giving you some for corners each. And you'll notice you can have Bloodfesters and Lord of Chains. So you can make your own characters out of a Bloodfester or Lord of Chains. So you have greater demon characters. And yeah, they sort of follow the Conqueror rule where you get 40 destiny points rather than the 20 for your regular champion. Because otherwise... You wouldn't be able to give them anything because they're 18 and 15 base. So. And then, of course, all the weapons that they can have. Spells, command abilities, um, bestial companions. So you can actually have a gargantuan beast with one of them. Or a mounted beast or a minor beast. And little familiars as well. Really cool. Um, loads of enhancement slash abilities. And then they've got the two characters again using these rules. So really cool. And moving on to a Tale of Four Warlords, so Age of Sigma armies got Lumineth, Slaves of Darkness, Seed of Sigma, and Head of Knights of Slanesh. And I was looking at these earlier and they are beautiful. I absolutely love these Lumineth. They are just so cool. I just love the colour schemes of them. The blue and the silver, they are just beautiful. And then we've got the Slaves of Darkness in the traditional sort of black, gold, and red. And the Cities of Sigma are, are really cool. So they're actually counting as Phoenix Guard, but they've all got like little scythes. And then the hooded heads from the. I want to say the. Uh, <laughs> what are they called? It's the Eternal Guard box. Um, yeah, whatever's in there with them, I can't remember. Wildwood Rangers, there we go. There we go. I get only in. Um, beautiful, and some lovely conversions in there. And really nice, there's some silver F in there too. And then we've got Slanesh. I really like the sort of pale grey skin tone they've gone with there, rather than the more sort of traditional purple. I really like that, and the white hair works really well. So absolutely four beautiful painted little armies there, and I can't wait to see them expand. So now we go into the Warhammer Underworlds. So, all about introducing the game to new players. And we've got a path to victory. So, a tactical guide to the two warbands in the new start set. And then we have a painting guide on non metallic metal. So, something that everyone who paints loves. Everyone loves non metallic metal. We all want to master it. Um, I'm not sure if GW have any videos on Warhammer TV about it, but um, hopefully maybe one day they will if they haven't. Um, but yeah, nice guide. And you've got all the colours listed there as well, which is nice. And for me, sometimes, with the gold especially, it's just trying to get the right shades of a colour, right? Um, you can get the nice blends and whatnot, um, with enough practice, of course. And just sort of knowing where all the light and shadows go. And definitely, um, there's some good videos online to look up if there's sort of thing you want to learn. A little silver for the sword as well. I actually find silver harder than the gold. Um, most people will probably think it's the other way around, but... Um... Ah, it's just turned out beautiful though. And then they've got like a Magnus and a Sanguinius using non-metallic metal stars, and they just look beautiful. Yeah, it's a very... It's a technique that everyone, I think everyone wants to master, and it's, it's tricky, but... You'll get a practice. But it's nice that I've done a little guide for it. Um, it's something I do think video probably works better for, but it's still nice that they've got it in there. So, we've got this beautiful uh, Deptus Titanicus scene there. And, can you actually say what this section's about? Uh, just, uh, just a couple of guys talking about there. Collection, so sh showing off their beautiful miniatures. I always approve of that. 
And yeah, that's absolutely stunning. I love the flame effect he's got going on there. And these ones are blue and white. Always brave to use white. But it looks, it looks stunning. Um, blue, white and gold is just a combo that just works together so well. And I really like it. So we've got some hangers on scenarios for Necromunda. So, it says ammo, uh, hangers on are vital to the survival of any Necromunda gang without rogue dogs to patch up fighters ammo jacks to check. Weapons and slot to feed and most gangs wouldn't last long at all, but what happens when hangers on get caught in a crossfire? So, got some missions um, for that. The Liber Xenologists. So this is Black Library Illuminations, um, all about Xenos, as you could probably guess. Some beautiful stuff. Really like that catch and devil. That would make an awesome miniature. Um, some really cool Gene Sealer Cult, some Drakari, Tau. That is actually an amazing piece, actually. I haven't seen that before. Uh, middle F, Mo Modlin Bilbo's Trolls, so there's stone trolls there. A little article all about how they were made and painted. Really cool, really nice how they've came out. Uh, Black Library, continuing on with the Chronicles of the Wanderer. Uh, quite a few pages of that. And that will lastly bring us inside the studio. So not outside the studio anymore, back inside the studio. And um, got some lovely Sons of Medusa. Some Death Company. Looks like there's a game going on there with some Tyranids and some Chaos. And really nice green Nighthorn, absolutely beautiful. And then lastly, Sauron Leiden. A little force there. It's so funny having like the green base on him. You always sort of picture him being around a really sort of dark environment. Uh, next issue, The Fallen. Hopefully about Fallen Dark Angels. That'd be nice if they got an index of stars or something. That'd be awesome. Um, we'll keep fingers crossed on that one. Um, but yeah, that was White Dwarf. I don't even say the issue number. 463. So that's April 2021. So yeah, that's what's in there. I um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, if you did, as always, please do feel free to give it a thumbs up. And yeah, if you want to keep up to date with all these white dwarf videos and really painting tutorials and conversion videos and whatnot, um, do feel free to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.